Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna to be making a video going step by step to the process of how I transfer my photos onto wood using polycrylic. And at the end, I'm gonna give what are some hopefully helpful tips for you while you're going through the project yourself. So before we get into this, I just wanted to put this quick little timeline up because I know that there's nothing more frustrating than searching through a video trying to find something specific. So here you go, all the steps with their times. I really hope that this is helpful for you guys. Now let's get into this. So the materials you need for this project are pretty simple, some polyacrylic, sandpaper, piece of wood, photo printed from a laser printer, a foam brush, and then something with a straight edge to smooth the paper out. So I'm using the Minwax Clear Gloss Polyacrylic. You can get this 8 ounce can at Walmart for I think around $8, which seems a little expensive, but it's fairly thin and it goes a long way doing these projects. So you want to get your photo printed on a normal piece of copy paper, nothing special. And you're going to want to make sure it's from a laser printer. Um, I do believe that it can be done from an inkjet printer, but the technique is a little different. Um, and so when you're printing on normal copy paper, you want to make sure that it's from a laser printer. So if you don't have a laser printer, no need to worry. Um, you can go to FedEx or Staples, somewhere like that, and get an 8.5x11 for somewhere around 50 or 60 cents, which is not that expensive and totally worth it for just um, doing this type of project. You're also going to want to make sure that your photo is reversed horizontally when you get the print done. So this is what the photo looks like normally, and then this is the reverse on the print, so that when you flip it over, put it on the wood, it's gonna come out looking normal. So I did the sizing and the horizontal flip all in Photoshop, but you don't need something as crazy as that. You can use something as simple as Microsoft Word um, to flip it horizontally and size it to the size of your wood. So when getting your wood ready, not a lot, you're just gonna wanna make sure that your wood is nice and smooth and has no finish on it. If it has a finish on it, the ink's not gonna be absorbed into the wood. So make sure there's no finish and just smooth it out, sand it a little bit, especially if there's any rough spots or on the edges, um, make sure it's nice and smooth. One more thing when it comes to your piece of wood is I've found that softer woods will look, work a lot better for this project. I've succeeded both with pine and cedar. Um, I tried birch, which is a harder wood, and the ink just would not stay on, just kept coming off. And so I'm not sure if that's a universal truth about this project, but I have experienced um, success with soft woods and I'm sure that even like a base wood, which is what a lot of the wood slabs at Michael's and craft stores is, would work just as well too. So the next step is put the polycrylic on, just using a simple foam brush. And the question is always how much to put on. Um, every article you read will say, put a thick layer, but not too thick. And that's so subjective, what's too thick? But I found that um, just putting enough to cover it when it comes to the polycrylic is just enough. Just wanna get a nice layer and make sure all the edges, a lot of the times it's hard to get it on the very edge. So you wanna make sure that you get it on the edges nice and good. Take your print upside down, make sure it's facing the right way. When you put the print on, you wanna get something that's a flat surface, something like a credit card will work just fine. I have this putty knife here and you're gonna to wanna to flatten out the surface, get all the bubbles out. And now is the waiting game. And this is one of the main reasons that I choose the polyacrylic over the Mod Podge. Um, I know with the Mod Podge, you only have, you have to wait about 12 hours at least, probably overnight sometimes. And I'm just not that patient with the polyacrylic. You only have to wait an hour till you can start wiping it off. Especially if you're trying to just get this right, get this process right. Having to wait overnight to just try one is just a lot of work and a lot of waiting. Now comes the fun part. And it's definitely the most tedious, but also the most rewarding. It's time to take the paper off and reveal the image. So what you're gonna wanna do is dampen the paper. You don't wanna soak it, but you wanna get it a little damp so that it'll come off. And I like to do sections at a time. If it's this size print, I'll usually do about half of it and then the other half. And this part can get a little messy, so you might wanna put a piece of paper towel down or something to uh, keep the scraps from getting everywhere. And what you wanna do is you just wanna start rubbing with your fingers. I know a lot of people um, will use a, some type of tool or a paper towel or a toothbrush or something like that to get the paper off. And they all probably work really well. I've just found that the easiest to use my fingers what I do is I'll do it, um, get a first layer off, and then I will let it dry, go back and re-wet it, and then get a little bit more paper off each time. I'll do it about three or four times um, of letting it dry and then getting another layer of paper off. So no need to try and take it off all at one time because it's not all gonna come off at one time. And so when you first do it, it's gonna look like it's not working, um, 
but you just have to keep waiting and keep doing it a little bit and it will eventually all come off. So at this point I've gotten about a layer off of the paper and you can you know you can see the image but there's obviously still a lot of paper on here. So at this point I'll let this dry, I'll stick it in front of a fan or even a hair dryer, let this dry and you'll be able to see all the paper that's still left on it and then go back and get another layer off. So now I've let this dry and you can obviously tell that there's still a lot of paper on it and when it's dry you can see that a lot more. So we're just going to repeat the same step, get it damp and then take another layer of paper off. So now it looks like a lot of the paper has come off. There's still some on there, so we're gonna let this dry one more time and try to get a little bit more off. So we're gonna do the same thing. Try to get the rest of the paper off. When you put the finish on, when you put a some type of urethane or um, clear finish on, it will cover up the paper, so you won't be able to notice the paper through the finish. Um, so you don't have to worry about the paper showing up if you can't get every speck off. You wanna get as much off as possible so there you have it. Once you're happy with how much paper you've gotten off, it's ready to put the final coat of finish on to protect the ink and also just make the image pop and a lot more vibrant. So for finishing the print, I actually just use the polycrylic as the clear coat finish just because one, it's handy. You don't have to worry about getting anything else. And also a lot of the polyurethanes um, have a yellowish tint to them and the wood's already yellow so I didn't want any more of a yellow tint and the poly acrylic um, just tries, dries absolutely clear and I like that. So I usually use two coats of the poly acrylic in the end to finish it off. So there we go, one coat on, I'm gonna let that dry and then put another coat on. And here we have the final finished wood piece. Um, doesn't look too bad, put in a nice simple little wood frame. You can see the wood grain coming through the sky a lot right here and even in the, even in the waves. Um, overall, it turned out pretty good. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up. Um, be sure to comment any questions that you might have, or if you have some um, criticism for me, I welcome it, because I know that there's some probably things I can improve on. So um, drop that in the comments below. And other than that, stick around. I'm gonna give a couple helpful tips for this project. First tip I'd give when doing this type of project is to start small. And I'm talking about the sizes of the wood and the prints. Um, bigger obviously means more expensive and so you just want to start smaller when you're first doing it There's a chance something could go wrong And so by starting smaller you're not wasting as much money if something does go wrong while you're trying to figure out how to get it just right So something else that matters a lot when it comes to printing on wood is just picking out a photo That's gonna look good on wood because not everyone does um, and what I mean by that is The lighter parts of the photo are where the wood grain is gonna wood grain is gonna show through and so you want to pick a photo that has a lot of contrast and a lot more um, light the darkness. An example of a not so good photo right here is of the northern lights. It's a night shot. Most of the photo is dark. There's a little bit of highlight in the light right here, but overall this is a dark shot and so you can't really see much of the wood grain. And so it doesn't it doesn't do it justice to print it on wood because you can't really see much of the wood grain. Um, you want to have a photo that has a lot more highlights. Um, however, that being said, you have to keep in mind that where the photo is completely white, um, no ink is going to get on the wood there because there's no ink on the page. Um, and so if you have a lot of detail in the white parts of your photo, it's going to come out not looking so great. And I have an example right here. Um, this is a shot of Maui and there's a lot of white in the clouds up here. These are all clouds. Um, but there's a little bit of gray in the clouds and so it come out kind of smudgy. Because some of it was white, some of it was gray. And so it just doesn't come out looking really great. Um, so you got to keep that in mind. It's best to have it's best to have a gradient um, from white to a color into like the sky, like the one we did today. Um, this is a bigger version of that. There's a nice gradient coming from the, where the sun is at up to the blues in the sky. And so it lets a lot of the wood grain show through. So you wanna keep that in mind when you're picking out your photo, because um, that's gonna be what's most important is having a picture that actually looks good on wood. One of the last things that I would say that has to do with picking out your photo is to pay attention to the wood grain um, in relation to your photo so that you know what's gonna come out where. And an example of that, and what I mean is, um, this one, which is probably my favorite one, um, the wood grain almost follows the peak, the mountain peaks um, in this photo. And you, the wood grain came out through the sky and it's gradient in the sky, and it curves almost over the peaks of the mountains right here. I would be lying if I say that I planned this um, because I didn't, it just turned out really awesome. But it's an example of, if you do pay attention to that, you can make something look really awesome um, from where the grain is and putting it in the right part of the photo.